Hello gamers and runners, this is Sardis P. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'll show you the basics of Dead Sector Run for this game, Sync. Well, the tutorial section will pretty much explain the basics of the game, but if you're like me who didn't pay attention, just play the game, or you just missed some details, then this video is for you. Now, before doing a Dead Sector Run, you need to make sure that you set up some things first. Once you are in Haven, talk to Eli Gardner, this guy here. You will see your permanent primary, secondary, and melee weapon from this window. I say permanent because there are temporary weapons that you can pick up from the dead sector runs. I'll explain more on that later. Left click on the weapon you want to set up to go in the selection window. This is where you choose the weapon that you like depending on your playstyle. You can unlock more weapons as you increase your player level and you can increase your player level with the experience you gain from doing Nerva and dead sectors run. For the WoW Factor Sniper Rifle, you would need player level 50 in order for you to unlock it. You can see your player level hovering beside you while in Haven. I'm currently at level 45. Going back to the selection window, you can see other weapons. The weapon stats will compare the current equipped weapon and the weapon you're looking at. This is something you should look into when deciding your weapon of choice and playing style. On top of your stats would show the attachments that you can customize for a weapon. While left click will let you choose the weapon you want, right click will send you to the customization window. Hit the drop down from each of the attachments and choose from the list. Different attachments have different effects. You can have different sights, suppressors can reduce recoil, magazines can increase ammo capacity, and so on. Again, customize depending on your playstyle. You get to unlock attachments as you increase your weapon proficiency level. And you increase your weapon proficiency level by using the weapon during runs. The more you use the weapon, the faster you increase your proficiency. Go back to the selection window to see your proficiency level, current weapon proficiency points, and the next proficiency weapon level requirement. It's the same mechanics for your secondary weapon, although for the attachments, it's less with secondary weapons, and there are no attachments for your melee weapons. But different melee weapons would have different stats. Although you think you're already good with your primary, secondary, and melee weapon combination, you might want to look at this next part first because it can change your playing style. Again, as you are running about Haven, you can press tab to open the armband menu. And from here, you can select and choose the runner that you want to use. The first three runners, they are basically available at the start of the game. But for Ragna, she will be available from the second day of the daily rewards. And Mr. Park will be available from the eighth day. You'll see the daily rewards window as soon as you start the game and enter Haven, and then you can claim them as rewards from there. Or if you want, press I to open the event center window. Under the daily reward tab, you'll see what rewards you'll receive as you play the game daily. Again, Ragna as second day reward, and Mr. Park here as eight day reward. Going back to the list, we have Layla. You can buy Layla from Mel Cregan store using Haven credits. And you can gain Haven credits from daily rewards and quest from Caraway, which I will show you in a while. Now, for our runners, we have Dead Cut. For me, Dead Cut is a close range to mid range runner with his crowd control fire grenade and his passive skills. This is the fire grenade, a grenade that will spit and bounce producing a lasting burn area. And as you can see, that synergizes with this ability which is hot wheel. When on fire, movement speed is increased and fire affliction duration is shortened. And another perk that he has is the last bullet in your magazine deals fire affliction. Basically, it's close quarters combat up to mid-range for me, and he is a DPS character. By the way, perks are passive skills, while armband are your active skills. Next in our list is Glory. For me, Glory is a runner for Nerva Run or PvP. Although she can act as support and long-range DPS for Dead Sector or PvE runs because of her ability, which is Smoke Bomb, a bomb that releases poison gas and blinds enemy runners. It's focusing on runners. Although, I guess it will also work with nanos. And then her perks or passive ability is Sightlines, highlight rival runners through sniper scopes and see through smoke. 
And then the other one is the tracker. Increased nano weak point damage shooting runners will tag them. Our third runner is your total support character and a tank. Well, for me, at least. He is a tank because of his perks. His main skill is Healer's Aura, where you will heal and automatically revive teammates inside healing radius. Now, as you play PvE and PvP, if your HP bar depletes to zero, you'll be knocked down. And another runner will need to revive you in order for you to fight again. Now, with this skill, Healer's Aura... As long as you are within the healing radius, you are going to be automatically revived. Why do I say the Dr. Stone is actually a tank? Because of his passive skills or perks. Combat medic, use medkits, and revive teammates faster. Medkits will be used to regenerate your HP. Now, if you can regenerate your HP faster than the other runners, basically your tank type. Medical Marvel recovers more health when using medkits in reviving teammates so this guy here is really support slash tank type runner next runner that we have is ragna and for me ragna is a scout because of her armband skill which is radiant eye nearby teammates can detect enemies leech health from stunned nanos she could possibly play as a tank because of her passive healing skills which is that the fire recover health when killing prime nanos or rival runners six cents detect rival runners at close range next in our list my favorite is park park for me is a mid to long range dps runner his armband skill is chain bomb a bomb that chain strikes between multiple enemies and that synergizes with his passive perk to generate ammo, which is bloody bullets. Generate ammo from weak point in chain bomb kills. At the same time, you can maximize that perk bloody bullets by using LMG because of his other perk steady hand. Gradually reduces recoil during continuous LMG fire. Finally, our last runner, we have the close range assassin, Leila. She has ghosting which is synergistic with her perks. Ghosting, make yourself invisible for a short time, dealing increased damage to nanos when using melee attacks to break invisibility. Although I don't know yet on how effective she can be against nano bosses which are tyrants. Her perk is Healing Blade, melee attacks restore your health and blood rush after a near miss or taking damage increase your movement speed for a short time. So these are our runners available for now. On the other side here, you can choose your companion Nano. All four Nano companions are unlocked once you reach Haven. First Nano that we have is Crusher. He is a close quarter DPS type and acts as a deco especially against Tyrants. Tyrants are Nano bosses by the way. Each of the companion Nano would have their attributes. Nano Arm attribute will only be active if you are recalling your companion Nanos by pressing X during PvE and PvE modes where in your nano will come back to your arm and that's the only time that your attribute nano arm will be active. As for Crusher, his nano arm is increased movement and melee attack speed. Now, you can command your nano by pressing Q during PvE or PvP. And there are two actions that they can do, either deploy them or lock on a target. Now, each of the nanos would have different deployment and lock on mechanics. For Crusher, deployment is guards the target position and its lock-on chases the target and attacks at close range. Next companion nano that we have, Suppressor. Nano arm is aimed down sights faster and reduce crosshair spread while moving. His deployment is patrol the target area. and lock on attack targets with long range shock blast projectiles. So this guy here is a long range companion nano. Next in our list, Guardian. Attribute, nano arm forms a shield around the runner while aiming. Deployment, form a one-sided shield at the target position. Lock on performs a shield attack. Our last companion nano is Seer. 
Nano Arm. Detect nearby rivals on your radar, highlights nano weak points, and makes them more vulnerable. Deployment creates a packed nano decoy that periodically releases a scan, highlights nano weak points, and boosts weak points damage. In its lock on, fires a powerful laser beam at its target. Another setup that would help you improve your runs is the weapon mod. Each weapon type would have different weapon mods that you can unlock either by increasing your power level or completing some conditions. I will tell you more about power level in a while. For my LMG, I have the regeneration mod equipped which really changes my playstyle and is synergistic with runner park perk skills. Most of the time, I wouldn't need to reload because of this passive reload mod. Now I can unlock the other mods by again increasing my power level or meeting some other conditions. For the Heavy Hands mod, I can find it in Sector 2 chest, and for the Missile Launcher, I can unlock it by eliminating Pack Nanos a thousand times. You'll see all the other different weapon mods here at the bottom and how you will be able to unlock them. Make sure to choose the weapon mod that will fit your playstyle. Another setup from the armband window that I really think is important would be the runner mods. And you can use them under these four PVE ports. Each of these PVE ports would have different mods that are independent from one another, meaning you can't use a mod from PVE port 1 to PVE port 2, 3, 4. You will gain these mods as loot or rewards from dead sector playthroughs. To choose the mod that you want to use, just left click on one of the ports and then choose from the list that you have. Again, each of these mods would have different functions. Make sure to choose the best mod for your playstyle for your runner, weapon, and nano companion. For my PBE port 1, I have Return on Investment Equip, which makes killing nanos regenerate my ammo. For my PBE port 2, I have the old one too, which boosts primary weapon damage for 5 seconds after a critical hit. For my PvE port 3, I have Shooter's Touch, increased chance of dealing critical damage for 5 seconds after a weak point kill. And for my PvE port 4, I have Headhunter, where each time the runner skills used, weak point damage increases 20% up to max of 60%. I chose all of these mods for my playstyle of using LMG, which is synergistic with Park's passive skills, and at the same time synergistic with Seer's attributes. You can power up these mods by pressing Q. Speaking of power ups, seeing those numbers under the name of your mod for Return on Investment 909, for the 012 890, and for Shooter's Touch 862, those are the power levels of each of your mods. And you will see your total power level here. Currently have a total of 3,573 power level. It's saying that your power level reflects the strength of your mods and weapons. Although, when I tried changing my weapons, it didn't really change my power level. And when I do change my mods, it changed my power level. If you want to increase your power level, all you need to do is power up. You would need to sacrifice a higher power level mod if you want to power up any of your mods. For my PvE port 1, since there are no other mods, with power level higher than 909, by pressing Q, nothing is showing on the list. Pressing left click, it will show the list of the mods that I currently have. And let's say I want to increase the power level of upcycling. I'll just press Q, and these are the mods that I can sacrifice with their power levels to increase the power level of this upcycling mod. Once I hold left click with reload to unload, the power level of upcycling mod would go up from 730 to 897. So all I need to do is hold and click to make sure that this mod would power up. Let's try with this 825 one. So my upcycling went up to 825. If I want to increase the power level further, then I still have this too with 897 power level and 850 power level. Before we proceed, if you're finding this video beneficial for you, please drop a like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. I would really appreciate that. Thank you. Moving on, I know I did mention about rewards earlier. So, for Caraway here, you can press R in front of her, and you'll see the daily jobs that you have and weekly jobs that you have. 
by hovering on the jobs, you'll get additional information on what kind of rewards you'll have. In this case, I would have a runner mod, some Nerva, Haven credits, and a Meridian Pass experience. Finally, we'll go to the Dead Sector mod. Just talk to Caraway, and you'll have the Situation Table window. You have two options from here, play PvP or PvE, which is Dead Sector Runs. Hitting left click, you'll see the sectors where you can play. For each of the sectors, you would have recommended power level. Since I already have 3,573, it's safe for me to play with sector 3. You would be playing with other two runners for each of these sectors. They are chosen randomly. Now, the higher your power level versus the recommended power level for each of the sectors, the higher your damage would be. And I think that's one of the boons of the game so far. The players with lower power levels can join you in a sector as long as they are able to complete the prior sector level. Meaning, runners with power level lower than 2000 can join you in playing sector 2 as long as they are able to complete sector 1. And they can do that since they can play with other players that has higher power level than 1000 who chose to play sector 1. As long as they are paired up with higher power level runners or players, they can proceed with the game. This makes completion of sector much harder and longer because weaker teammates are pulling the team or you down. Although it works the other way around too. If a stronger player decides to grind back to lower sectors, then you get to play with them and the sector would be a breeze. Each sector window would also show the sector chests and the rewards that you would receive from them. You would need to gain points every after completing a sector and once you've reached the target point, you'll be able to unlock one of these rewards. Meaning, you would need to gain 3000 points 5 or more times to get all of these rewards. It's the same for other sector levels, only with increasing gold points. By the way, you can choose your region from here. And you can add friends from here. So you're going to start with Sector 1. Recommended power is 1000. Left click on it. We're going to have our countdown. This is how the match will start. Two other runners with you. You can change your runner by pressing spacebar. And you can choose whichever runner, weapon, or nano companion you want to have. The goal of this PvE mode, that sector, is to cleanse the surge storms and find the surge formation. The surge formation you'll find that uh, near the end of the each of the section. You can see your map on the upper right corner, and there's a violet border that's flashing and a broken line that will show you the way to the first surge storm the nearest surge storm to your location. So this is the surge storm. You're in third person view. You can hold a click left, left mouse button and shoot them. Or you can choose to press left click once and you'll be in first person view. So those are the nano enemies. You can see them. And you'll see prime nanos spawning from the surge storms let's go and that's another surge storm i'm gonna go there they're sort of the leader of the surge storm of the nano pack and you need to sync with them in order for you to summon your own companion nano now by holding the right mouse button i can go uh, first third person although it's zoomed in so you have three povs when playing PvP or PvE. Now I'm sinking and I have my seer. That's our seer. I was able to command it. I was able to summon it. Now you'll have loot as you defeat nanos. This one, I have the armor. You can pick that up. And you'll see I have two additional armor bars from the lower left corner. You can also pick up medkits. You can use medkits using four. And beside that, you'll see the allocated keyboard key, which is G for your skill. You'll see on your map, there are several icons showing. 
I will go to a cache. Random nanos are spawning across the map. That happens. Now, this is a cache. Watch out for those. A container that may contain high value rewards. Watch out for those. And then you'll gain some loot. The ammo pouch will increase your maximum ammo capacity. Whatever, whatever weapon it is that you're using. You can see that I'm using my permanent weapon. That's the one that we set up or equip while we're, we are in Haven. The armor are temporary. Same with your ammo pouch. Those are just temporary. As you play the game, you get to pick up higher grade level for your armor and for your pouch. That would increase your armor, armor bar and your ammo pouch. Your maximum ammo capacity. As you defeat nanos, you'll also get radius. Those are the red stones. See those? And on the lower left corner, you'll see your avatar. You see my name there, Sardis. I currently have 1,515 radius. Those are just temporary currency while you are in a game. Now, these exchange machines, vending machines, you can spend Radia on powerful mods. Remember, anything that you buy using Radia are just temporary. So I'm gonna buy here. It's up to you to choose whichever mod you wanna wanna have. These are random, so conflict, conflicting afflictions, uh, poison laser. Now, for conflicting afflictions, this is a rogue mod, meaning it will affect your runner. There's another type of mod within the game, which is the arm mod. The poison laser, this is for your companion nano. And as you buy from this, the radia needed increases. You know, the price the price increases. That's where you will spend the radia that you loot or you gain while you're in game. You can gain radia from defeating nanos and at the same time from opening cash. You can also see the vending machines from the map. So make sure that you always check your map. Now, I can't pick this up because this is at blue grade level. Same with this one. The hierarchy of the uh, grade levels is white, blue, violet, and then gold. Now we're going to another icon in the map. This is another thing that you need to watch out for, which is the safe houses. This door can be unlocked with a runner's armband. So open that. There are resources, and this is where you can pick up your primary temporary weapon. So you can press 2 to use that. Again, that's just temporary. As soon as you finish this sector or this game, you will lose that weapon. Now, what if I choose to pick this up while I currently equip my permanent weapon? I'll drop my permanent weapon. I'll pick that up, but that's going to be also temporary. So I have two temporary primary weapon. And when the game ends, I'll have my temporary primary weapon back. Now, this is another thing that you need to watch out for. These are the Meridia stores. You can upgrade your weapons here. So my strategy is I usually save up my Radia and upgrade my permanent primary weapon here. I can upgrade that to blue. Then I can upgrade that to um, violet now. I need 1,200 and I'm at 600, so I'm short of 600 radia before I can upgrade my higher power to gold level or gold grade. You can also buy medkits from here, although I don't usually do that because there are medkits usually drop from enemy nanos and at the same time from cash. And if I have spare radia, then I would upgrade my armor from here. Although, uh, make sure to do that last thing before you approach the tyrant because most of the time you would you get to pick up a gold grade armor or maybe a violet grade armor. This is an ammunition crate. Of course, you will lose ammo from your magazine, from your ammo pouch. So you can pick up ammo from here. Okay, since I still have maximum ammo, then it would let us pick up. Now my teammates have already approached the search formation. I'll also go there. The broken line is indicating where the search formation is. You need to watch out for the surge difficulty. You can see on the below the the minimap. Once that reach 100%, if you are outside that that border here, you will gain HP damage passively. So make sure to finish the game early. And at the same time, the higher the surge difficulty, the harder or the tougher the nano enemies would be. 
There you go. So we're going to the next one now. And that's a success. Now, every end of a round or a level, you will have this round summary for the mod reward. You have the time and it will be depending on your ranking who gets to go first. So I'll choose Exchange Rift. We are now moving to the second area or second section of Dead Sector 1. Sometimes you can choose not to go with the broken line, instead go into another direction, especially if you can see that search storm from far away, because by then you can solo a search storm and get all the rewards by yourself. You should only do that if your power level is enough for you to clear out a search storm and be safe. G, that's our skill, so I've used that, a grenade. This is our melee attack use that again the more you use your weapons your permanent weapons be it primary secondary or melee the faster you will gain proficiency from those weapons you can see your teammates from the minimap if they're within the area otherwise they would be at the border if your minimap represented by a circle with different colors those are your teammates this is how you revive a teammate by holding E. You rescue them, revive your teammate, and get them back in the fight. That's the same way that your teammates would revive you if ever you're knocked down. And that happens, of course, if you deplete your, if the enemies deplete your HP. Falling from heights will damage your HP. Be careful of that. Make sure to clear out as much surge storm as you can and open cache as many as you can before you go to the surge formation and before the surge difficulty reaches 80 percent so you can easily clear out the section i always keep my companion nano in my arm you can command them to attack by pressing q like that so you can see after a while uh, the search formation will be identified and again the broken line will lead there but you can still choose to look for other search storms and increase your radio upgrade anything that you can upgrade now see that armor that's in violet grade level so i'm gonna pick that up and that will increase our armor bar randomly there would be search formations like this across the map that's a mini surge formation because compared to the main surge formation, that's smaller. So those mini surge formations spawn randomly in the map. They would have their own prime nanos, pack nanos. We call them pack nanos because they're in a pack and they're kind of a father nanos. Okay. Now, once you're in here, press E and hold it to deploy the Scarab for scanning. Deploying Scarab, once you're at 100%, you can then attack the Surge Formation. And there, you'll see the weak point. Attack that so you can do higher damage. Make sure to avoid attack coming from that Surge Formation. You see that highlighted where the attack would come from. You can dodge. From time to time, the surge formation will shrink and it will spawn out pack nanos like that and prime nanos. We're off to the next zone. And that's a success. Since I have the highest round score, I get to pick whichever I want to use. Now, before you face the tyrant for each of the sectors, you'll have the chance to buy from the Meridian shops just like this, do exchanges, and pick up some ammunition from the ammunition crate in this sort of a safe house. Okay, so let me upgrade our higher power to gold. That's the highest grade. That's the highest attack power. And let me upgrade my armor as well. See, it's now full bar. And still have 1,000 to spare to buy any of the mods. And this is it. This is our first tyrant.
make sure to shoot it on its weak point. You'll have higher damage by that. Depending on your playstyle, you can send your nano like that. So it will focus on your nano instead of you. Or you can have your nano back. Your playstyle would also need to change depending on your teammates. If you have teammates who are tank types, then you can go ahead and be a DPS. If you have teammates who are DPS, and maybe you think you have you are you're better suited to be a tank, then you go ahead and take on the role of being a tank. For now, since I have way higher power level than the recommended power level for Sector 1, I can choose whatever I want to. Your armor regenerates as long as you don't receive any damage for a certain amount of time, it will regenerate. But once it's defeated, you will receive damage and your HP will go down. So make sure to dodge attacks, make a strategic retreat just like this what I'm doing right now. And you can also do a perfect dodge. If you do a perfect dodge, although it's hard to do, you won't receive any damage. And at the same time, there are mods that would give you some perks if you do a perfect dodge. One of which is a health regeneration. There's a mod for that. So make sure to take a look at all the mods, take a look at all the perks of the runners, take a look at the skills of the companions, their abilities, and mix and match and determine what your build is gonna be. There you go, we defeated the tyrant. We are off to the rewards. By the way, this is where you can get the runner mods. So you get to pick them up as permanent runner mods as you play the game, PvE, and you can check them in Haven. That's the end of Sector 1. We have our round summary. I'm first with 70,000 points. Press X to return to Haven. You can gain experience from Dano damage, teammates survive, tyrant damage, time and match, completion bonus, and you can increase your player level. Seems like we're already at cap of level 50. That's it. For the loot, see, these are the mods that we've picked up and your weapon progression. And you can see my higher power. LMG is at proficiency level 11 and I get to open a sector chest those are the rewards that I have received we're gonna continue and now we are back to Haven there you go guys now if you find this video beneficial for you please 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 I would really appreciate it if you can leave a like comment you can subscribe and hit the notification bell and at the same time, if there's something that I missed, please put that on the comment section below. We can talk about it. If there are any tips that you want to say, if there are any tricks. And again, this game is still in open beta and I hope they would they can still improve it. So far, I, I, I like it, the gameplay. One thing that I want them to improve is the customization of the characters and customization, more on the customization really of your weapons, of your character, rather than skin. I want to have the ability to change each of the clothing and maybe interactions between other players because right now you don't see other players in Haven it's only you and all the other runners that you can play as there you go guys thank you so much for watching this is Sardis B until my next vlog bye bye